it was, it was a beautiful day that day. It was one of the first days that we had some really great powder. And I thought, wow, let's go out and go sledding. And uh, noticed that Ryan kind of hit the fence area. A person got in my way, so I turned, but then it was headed for the direction of the fence. So I tried to turn, but then it was too late, so it, I ended up hitting the fence. But there was a curb right next to the fence, so I ended up hitting that also. He hit the fence, and as I was coming down, and I kind of slowed down, and I went over to him to see what was happening, and he was just kind of laying there. Ryan came into the emergency room um, in the late morning, I think it was, and he had been sledding and without a helmet, if I remember right, um, he went through a chain link fence and hit a concrete wall. When he came into the emergency room, he actually looked very good. And I, as the, one of the charge nurses in the pediatric intensive care unit, I respond to all the pediatric codes and traumas in the emergency room because we're the pediatric specialists. So we go down and make sure, go down to the emergency room and make sure that um, they're not just treated like adults, they're treated like children. My biggest concern when we reached the emergency room was for Ryan and um, his special needs, because Ryan has Asperger's syndrome. And if there's a lot of lights, there's a lot of sounds, uh, those kind of things can really set him off. The doctor was really great about it. They immediately told everyone, you know, tone it down. Let's turn off all the beeps and the monitors as much as we can and make it as easy of an experience for Ryan as possible. Ryan was doing well. We knew from his CAT scan that he had um, a big laceration or a cut in his kidney from his injury. Um, but he was stable at that point, and so the plan was to send him up to the ICU for further monitoring in hopes that we wouldn't have to operate on him. The CAT scan said, hey, he's got a ruptured kidney. Um, so then, then they took him up to ICU, and then he began to, his blood pressure, I guess, kind of went down a few hours later. So that's when they realized, hey, we need to, the doc says, hey, we're going to need to take out the kidney. So... He looked really good in the emergency room. I, I think he was a little, he didn't act like he was in a lot of pain. He was talking and I was surprised. I didn't think we would get him in the ICU. Then when the, neuro, the surgeon called and said that he had fractured his kidney and we needed to take him up in the ICU and they were gonna take him to surgery, I, I was surprised. He didn't look that hurt when he was in the emergency room. So we got him in the bed and saw his blood pressure and then all of a sudden, there were like five or six people in the room taking care of him and within about 30 minutes I think we had him down to the um, operating room. Once Ryan got up to the PICU, the pediatric intensive care unit, um, that his blood pressure had fallen to dangerously low levels. I was just in shock that two hours ago we were on the slope sledding and now my son's gonna lose his left kidney. I think the first words out of his mouth were you know, he said, what happened? What's going on? And, well, you're done with, you're done with surgery. And he leans back and he goes, hallelujah. We want to make sure that kids know what everything is for in a hospital environment. They don't understand why a straw is in their arm. That doesn't make sense. Why would a straw be in my arm? I, I don't understand that. So if you explain that the straw is there for medicine and fluids to travel through your body so you can get better, it makes everything more clear to them. But Ryan's brother, I remember, was pretty somber, not much of a reaction at all, seemed to be very anxious and worried about what was going on with his brother. Part of our role in the hospital is to focus on sibling support. Um, so if there is a patient that's admitted that has a breathing tube in his mouth or is unable to communicate, that can be a very scary thing for any aged sibling to see. At Memorial Hospital for Children, we have pediatric specialists that are all specifically trained in pediatrics. So they are used to seeing a child rather than a person. We try and do a lot of medical play around here, so the medical equipment isn't as scary. So filling up syringes with paint or making water guns out of IV tubing, um, it's all part of the fun of making this scary environment less scary and intimidating for kids. Well, she let us borrow her iPad just to kind of past the time because it's kind of boring just sitting in a hospital room. There are just so many different types of therapies that we use and I think that there's horses that come through the halls, there's dogs and it's just it's amazing to see the difference in the faces of the kids when they see all these different pets come through and it just really 
sets it apart, I think, because we really try to focus the care towards the patient because they're not small adults. They are a child and you need to treat them like that. We also have pages that we have parents fill out when they're first admitted to our unit and it's called the About Me form and they write what their favorite toy is or what their favorite activities are so that way they can be a little bit entertained when they're on our unit if they are able to do so. With each child that you have, they all they present different challenges with each patient that you have and Ryan specifically has Asperger's syndrome and he one thing that he and his mom both told me when I first received him as a patient was that he likes to be warned if we're going to touch him or take a blood pressure or temperature, he just likes to be well informed. Memorial Hospital for Children has a, a history that dates back uh, almost three decades and uh, it started with uh, an, uh, where a, a nurse, Kathy Winder, and a physician, uh, Dr. Robert Greensize, my former partner, uh, decided that uh, one room was going to be called the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. And that grew from uh, a one-room intensive care unit to a four-room intensive care unit to a 12-room intensive care unit to the 16-bed intensive care unit that we have today. We have a, a pretty robust pediatric emergency room, and so it's a whole separate area staffed by separate physicians that come in. We have separate pediatric surgical services, so general services, which myself and my two other partners um, provide, and then there are pediatric subspecialty um, services in surgery. That's neurosurgery um, that we also provide, as well as pediatric orthopedic surgery um, here at the hospital. And then we have general pediatric services, and most of the subspecialties that are covered under that as well, including gastroenterology, hematology, oncology, um, cardiology, all of those are available here. This allowed, uh, these facilities allowed Memorial Hospital to attract a cadre of very excellent subspecialty physicians, given the ability to, uh, for, with a, given a hospital where they could take care of these very ill uh, children, um, and the beauty of Colorado Springs, it was real easy to attract uh, pediatric subspecialists. We're the only children's hospital in, in the most comprehensive children's facility in all of Southern Colorado. Um, for me, the reason that I came here is because this is a children's hospital within a hospital. It was a pleasure to um, to just see the nurses and doctors interacting every day. Um, they included us in on the rounds, which I've never experienced in a hospital setting before. Um, and I felt really empowered and I felt like they really respected our wishes and um, really respected our knowledge as parents. The best news is that for the residents of Southern Colorado, they can know that their child, their infant, is getting quality care in their hometown or in their region.